My name is Drew Stanley, and I'm with the Archdiocese of Kansas City in Kansas. It's just like right there in the middle of America. And uh, a little bit about my background. So I was raised Protestant. My dad was a pastor growing up. And like from my earliest days, like my dad was on stage with the guitar, leading people in songs of praise. And that's like all I knew, really. Um, There's a camp, there's a Christian camp that was really instrumental in my upbringing. And so from an early age, I fell in love with serving. And that led me to uh, eventually in college become a cabin leader. And so that was my first time really leading like another group of people in prayer and Bible studies. And I remember when I was 19 and I was like sitting on the floor in a circle of like 12 middle schoolers and like a few other uh, co-cabin leaders. And we were just talking about maybe what the person uh, preached about that evening. And in the middle of asking one of the discussion questions, I kind of paused awkwardly and the kids are just staring at me like, why did he stop talking? And I just had this like deep sense of peace and affirmation that uh, it wasn't like a voice from the sky, but I, I felt like I, I, I love talking about Jesus and I want to keep doing that. So I, it was really when I was 19 that I, I fell in love with ministry. And so I, I cabin led for a few years and that um, I was working on my associates and I was like, well, what am I going to do after I get this? And a few of my older friends that were kind of like older brothers to me were getting bachelor's in ministry. And I was like, well, that sounds pretty cool because I, I love learning more about the Bible. And so there's a, a local university here, Mid American Nazarene University, where a few of my like uh, older friends went uh, through there and got a bachelor's in ministry. So I got a bachelor's in cross cultural ministry, and the theology classes were wonderful. And I was like, I, I want more. Like I want more of this. And so then some of those friends also went on to a Protestant seminary, and I was just kind of following along. Like I I loved what we were learning. I loved the opportunities that were coming up, where whether it was working at camp or different. Uh, churches and just serving my community. But eventually, uh, a bunch of red flags started coming up. And I saw that some of the things that I was thinking and believing in that setting were contrary to the heart of Jesus. It, I could, didn't have the exact words for it. But it's at the end of 2020, where I, I started questioning a lot of what I was, what we were discussing in, in uh, our classrooms, which by the way, was all on Zoom. So my, my previous seminary experience was similar to what we're doing here, but it's really refreshing to do it um, with the high calling because I can just rest peacefully knowing that what we're discussing, what we're learning about is Orthodox Christianity. It's the fullness of the faith. And so it was part of, I don't want to get too, I don't want to take up too much time. So I'll basically summarize it in saying that there, there were a lot of things that went wrong and like what we were learning. And so I eventually left. I didn't even finish the master of divinity that I started. And I was like, well, what are we going to do now? So uh, I just started searching with my dad and I, and I guess that to answer question two, what or who influenced you most to start down the path to the priesthood? Um, I was on a retreat for my birthday in April it's like two years ago um, of 2021 with my second youngest brother and my dad. It was just the three of us. And we were at Conception Abbey in Conception, Missouri with the Benedictine monks there. And I had never like been near monks. I was like, I didn't even know these guys still exist. I thought this was just in the history books or something, but it was, it was wonderful. We were in the, the Basilica there. And I remember my dad leaned over and he had been doing a little bit more research into Catholicism than I did. I was kind of curious and he pointed out this, this red candle that was burning. And he goes, Drew, do you know what that means? And I was like, no. And he said, well, do you remember in your bachelor's when you heard the term transubstantiation? I was like, yeah, but that's just like what those Catholics talk about, right? That's just what they believe or something. And he said, well, yeah, that, that red candle indicates that there's a consecrated host here in the tabernacle. And I was like, huh. And so I just, I walked over to that space. I didn't know I was supposed to genuflect or bow or anything. I was just curious. And I I stood there staring at the tabernacle and I said, God, is this what you're doing? Is this who you are? Is this you? And there was no voice from the clouds, but that was the beginning of this journey that I went on for the next several months of visiting different parishes, different Catholic groups around the archdiocese. And I was like, I, I, I need to learn more about this. I need to I think this is really important and I want to keep moving towards it. And so that is where I actually, at that time, I was still in the previous seminary, but anyway, um, 
I started falling, falling in love with uh, things I was learning online, uh, like different speakers, uh, Bishop Barron, Father Mike Schmidt, these uh, Catholic theologians on the internet that were explaining why they say th- certain things, why the church teaches this or that. And it all resonated so much with me. There was this coherency in the logic that what I was unfamiliar with. I used to call myself a theological mutt. I, I took pride in that. And I, I thought that Christianity was just picking and choosing whatever you wanted to believe. It was like a buffet. But when, when I found the fullness of the faith and Christ's real presence in the Eucharist, it changed everything. So Father Dan Morris is the vocation director of our archdiocese, and he's given me different opportunities. And Father Luke Doyle is also um, our vocation director. And they were the ones who told me about this program, the high calling. And I had never heard of it before, but it's been wonderful. And so I, I wanted to share just a few points of how throughout this journey, I've, I feel like I've, I've really been formed here. So there's a lot of different modules, the way of blank, the way of blank. And uh, I was tempted to just reference all of them, but we'd be here for too long. So a few that really, really have impacted me a lot. Um, I'll start with the way of Mary. Um, Dr. Mark Miravalli, I, I apologize if I pronounced his name incorrectly. But I, I had no idea, you know, as a Protestant, that was one of the things that we always kind of said, like, why do Catholics care so much about Mary? What's the deal with this? But when I heard that she is very active, she, she wants to help us guide, wants to guide us towards Jesus and wants to help us do whatever he tells us. That has changed my prayer life immensely and asking God, do you want me to enter the seminary? Like, where, where do you want me to go? What do, you, what do you want me to do? I'm also asking for her help. The way of communion, uh, Father Sam Moorhead explained, he spoke so highly of how priests have this deep friendship with Jesus that they like to share with others. And I'm the oldest brother in my family. I have three younger brothers. And one thing I love to do is to just share things with my brothers. If I find a cool song, a cool movie, it's our instinct to share it with each other. And so Jesus is better than any movie I've ever seen, uh, better than any song. And so I like sharing him the most. And when I heard uh, Father Sam talk about how that's what priests do, it uh, I just lit up with joy. Um, the way of temperance and social media with Father Sean has been fantastic. He gives great resources um, for people who want to pursue holiness. And I, I've been able to share those with some of my friends that uh, just walking through life with right now might be struggling with certain things. And Father Sean equipped us with really good advice and wisdom. The way of uh, The way of discernment with Father Dennis McManus was also really impactful in realizing that we are at war and we need to take that very seriously. And I even admit to you that there was a time in my bachelor's when my colleagues and even some of my professors and I would talk about, you know, maybe the devil's not even real. Maybe this is just mental health issues. And that's a really dangerous idea. And so Father Dennis uh, really helped us engage and really kind of sit with the fact that we are at war, but it's not something we have to fear because we are victorious in Christ. He has conquered sin, death, and the devil, and we can rest in peace there, but still actively pray against those things. So I don't know how long I went. That might be a little bit longer than you guys asked for, but thank you again for this opportunity and this wonderful program. It's impacted me a lot. And I also want to just share that um, you've been part of my my journey with applying to the seminary. And as of this morning, I had a a meeting with Archbishop Nauman and he's officially accepted me to be a seminarian for the archdiocese. And so I can also thank all of you for being part of this journey and helping me get here because it's not a solo endeavor. This is a, it's a miracle that I'm here really. So thank you all.